It makes me want to have a bowl. <laughs> And we see more discrimination of our community than across the EU, well, from the UN this time, where the UN has called for a comprehensive ban on cannabis advertising. Um, this is just really annoying at this stage because the UN are using our taxpayers' money. This is all paid for by, by the taxpayers across Europe um, uh, funding the UN. This is not needed at all at this stage, like a comprehensive ban on cannabis advertising. In fairness, if anything, you should have a look on and a ban on the advertising of all drugs, if anything. Um, that would be a much more better use of your times. But to look at a ban on, on advertising of cannabis is just discriminatory again at this stage. Because what, why banning the advertising of cannabis products at, at all? Um, if, if I'm selling a CBD product, why should I not be allowed to advertise that CBD product? What, what in the name of God is gives um, an alcohol company more right to be able to advertise their products on the likes of Facebook and on, on our bus stops as well? How many times have you driven past a bus stop and seen a bloody ad for J uh, Jack Daniels or something like that, you know? Um, or Jameson, you know? Um, but, but meanwhile, the UN now is calling on, on a ban on cannabis products. In order to, to, do you know, to, to in order for what? Um, and these are comments coming from um, a lady called uh, Angel Me. Um, and Angel Me had this to say. Um, she said, of course it is up to member states to decide if we want to take up this ban, but you now have a large private sector uh, that is now pushing to expand the cannabis market with all kinds of products claiming many things. She goes, it's, it's like tobacco advertising hundreds of years ago, which said tobacco was good for anything. The main thing is to make sure young people are not tricked by adverts into thinking cannabis is a healthy choice when it's not. Well, Angela me, I'm sorry, you know, but actually cannabis is actually a healthy choice when it is incorporated into a healthy lifestyle. Yes, it is. So your your misinformation here is ridiculous. She talks about the tobacco advertising of a hundred years ago. Wow. Wow, that is so disingenuous. A hundred years ago, tobacco advertising was done at a time when there was no standards in advertising. They, they were literally able to make all sorts of outlandish claims without any legal ramifications. Well, guess what? There is no laws in place that if an advertiser is to make any sort of Ill illegitimate claims about a product, well, there's laws there to prevent this. This is not like 100 years ago with tobacco products at all. No way, Jose. A hundred years ago with tobacco products, you had doctors and all sorts of people coming out and, and making um, unscientific claims because they were being paid to do so. The claims around cannabis now and the, the advertising around cannabis now is backed upon a lot of scientific data. Now, there is people out there who are overstepping some of the claims they're making about these products, and that's because they're uneducated. They don't understand the rules and regulations around making health claims on products. I had to go through four years of college myself to make, get, get some um, headway around those issues of what is and isn't a health claim when you're talking about products. I, I uh, started off a company, just for example, Super Fungi, where, and some of those products are up at Martin's World to buy them at the moment if you want to check them out. Um, but again, in those products, I incorporate some mushroom extracts. I can talk about the health benefits of the mushroom extract, but I cannot say that my product will deliver those health benefits. And that, that, that's a bit of a complicated thing to get around. So I could talk about the lion's mane mushroom being a nootropic and being shown in scientific studies um, to enhance cognitive abilities. Um, yes, I could talk about that in lion's mane. I cannot say that the super fungi's cacao blend with, newt with lion's mane will make you think better, faster, or whatever. You know, I can't make those claims. But I can say it contains lion's mane, which has been shown... You know, that, that's the way you get around it. But that, that's, you know what I mean? You've to, that, that took me a bit of time to, to understand. Um, so that, that's what's going on out there in the CBD market now. There's people making um, claims that go beyond what they're allowed to do. That is not like fucking tobacco, man. She, she did that complete fucking um, major overstepping. Uh, do you know, like it, that, that's such a fucking overstep of what today is, is uh, compared to that. What went on hundreds of years ago with tobacco? That was horrible, man. Horrible, like, you know, doctors going out saying that uh, smoking tobacco makes your lungs stronger. <laughs> In fairness, like, 
come on, like there is no claims like that being made about cannabis, like that sucking on a cannabis cigarette is going to make your lungs stronger. No, like because that's not backed up with science. So again, Angela Mee and the UN wasting our feckin' time and wasting resources um, calling for this ban. And, and it's not even a binding ban at all. Eh? And claiming it's for public health. No, it's not. If it was for public health, you would be out there examining the effectiveness of your stupid prohibition in the first place. That would be much more in line with uh, the benefits of um, of public health. Uh, the report, actually, um, that they published along with this uh, also suggested that from 1995 to 2019, the percentage of children and young people that perceive cannabis as harmful fell by 40%. Oh my God, imagine... People are seeing through the myths that were spouted about cannabis, the propaganda that was uh, pushed by the governments um, over the last dec- number of decades. Um, of course, you know, people are going to see over this because we've now got access to the internet. We've now got access to peer-reviewed scientific studies that have been showing us that cannabis is not as dangerous that as we've been led to believe. There was even a, a recent study that was published that tried to make claims that cannabis use is associated with uh, suicidal tendencies. Again, these studies are being are overstepping the findings. You know, they're basically trying to say that um, because there's people who use can- there's more people using cannabis who have um, suicidal tendencies than there is people who don't use cannabis who have uh, suicidal tendencies. But what they're overlooking then is that people possibly faced with suicidal tendencies could be self-medicating with cannabis. Again, because a lot of people are learning about the medical benefits of uh, of cannabis and using cannabis to possibly help with some of their mental health problems. And, and that's something that is well known out there that it's going on. Um, so again, correlation and causation are completely different. Um, and you know the, these studies, these these people, Angela, and me, and the people who go out and, and spout this nonsense, man, they're doing a public a disservice, is what they're doing. Um, included in uh, our commenter on this report actually was um, Steve Rolls. Um, Steve Rolls is from the drug reform group called Transform. And he said that whether one agrees with the proposed ban or not, the fact that the UN is actively engaging with the regulation debate is a tactic acknowledgement that illegal cannabis is something that cannot be ignored and has to be positively engaged with. Um, So that's something to be looking at, yeah, that the UN is now seeing that cannabis legalization is something that is happening and that their way of engaging with it is by trying to um, prevent, say, advertising of cannabis, you know, in order to impede upon what is uh, soon to be a legal market within Europe. Um, so that that is something to be noted on there. Um, and also to be noted on that just two nations signed up to the United Nations have ended the prohibition of cannabis to date, Canada and Uruguay. Canada has banned all adver- or Canada has bans on advertisements at retail dispensary doors and windows they also have bans on celebrity endorsement deals, um, the use of people or characters or animals or other imagery associated with uh, glamour, recreation, excitement, vitality, risk or dare, daring. <laughs> um, and Uruguay bans all cannabis advertising. Look, this is something I've said myself, but in, in, in um, terms of wider drugs, you know, that I don't think any drugs should be advertised in our society at all. Um, I believe if a drug is good enough for you to want to try it, then why does it need to be advertised to you? All of this branding and all of this nonsense, all of that stuff should be done away with. Again, for many of the drugs out there, um, you need maybe to get access through it through pharmacists or something like that. Um, but brand names and all of this kind of Budweiser and stuff, man, that, that should be all done away with. Why, like, you know, why why do I have to go down to my local bus stop and look at a lot of young people enjoying alcohol, you know, Smyrna Vice? Do you know why? Why do I have to look at that? If I want to enjoy alcohol, I know about alcohol. I, I know about alcohol. It's ingrained in our society. I don't need to be advertised it. Why? I, I don't understand it. Um, but look, that's just my opinion. I don't think any drugs should be advertised. And that's a, that's a debate I would welcome. 
Um, but to, to just call and d- discriminate against cannabis singly, no, sorry, I don't support that. <sighs> it makes me want to have a bowl. <laughs> <laughs>